Okay, so welcome to the goals and this goals of course deals with a very interesting world which is simulations. So whatever you like, whatever you inspired by, you may not get that into real life. So what you do is you say, okay, let me plug in virtual avatars around here and there, let me get interesting entities around here and there and let me see a beautiful video, a beautiful animation and that is called as simulation. So, in order to find out what I should be doing many times in life, you say, okay, let me run a simulation and see what's my future. Many times what you say is that 30 people are going to meet me and when they come, I need to just visualize what happens. You say, let's have some kind of a simulation around and using all that, you get to see interesting things. That's all what this course is about. Now, technically simulation could be classified as two types of simulations. The first one we call as microscopic. And these are the simulations where you say that, okay, this is my simulation canvas. These are all my simulation entities that I put over on this canvas and you say that let me model how each and every entity in the simulation canvas behaves. So somebody would love each other, somebody would hate each other, somebody would get into a fight with each other under some invoking conditions. Nature will have some own controls and each one of them will individually react to whatever they see, whatever they feel and you click on simulate. All these interesting things happen and that's what we call as a microscopic simulation. So all that the simulation does is that you look into each and every entity and decide how does it do. So, say I have got n simulation entities and this is my world. So, this is my simulation world. You put all these simulation entities around over here and you let them behave exactly as they want. So this guy loves these two people and this guy hates this person and so on and so forth. And therefore when you really need to simulate it up, you will go upon saying for all entities, for i is equal to 1 to n and all that you will say is that how does this agent behave? How does this entity behave? So you'll say get action for that entity given whatever it can see in the world. So given the sense of readings and then you will say act for agent I by action A. So if you really need to simulate it for one time, it may appear to be a O of N operation around over here because there's a loop on N and in reality it's actually O of log of N and where does the log come? The log comes because we assume that everybody looks around who all are there. So everybody looks around into the simulation and because everybody looks around hey you there you there so everybody is making in what we call as a proximity query and let's do it for this agent of course let's do how does it decide so it looks around and looking around it sees all these people after that it really cannot see so getting the people who are close by in this world is what is called as a proximity query 
And guess what? There is a verbatim that we do not discuss in this course called as the KD3 where the proximity queries under some assumptions like all the entities are small could be done in a logarithmic of time by this wonderful data structure called as the KD3 and that's what exactly happens in the simulation. You go upon click on the word simulate and you see all the entities behaving as per the natural order around over here and acting in this beautiful world in a microscopic simulation framework. The good thing about this is that these days you've got so much of compute in parallel like the laptop that I'm using before recording this lecture itself has a GPU that can do multiple things in parallel. Not far from here we've got the Institute Central Computing Facility, so many nodes I could just call everything up in parallel. So there's so much of parallelism around and that's exactly what this is, that each one of them could be parallelized. And that's why you see the simulations are incredibly fast for N entities. And you could do so much to see what's going on. Now, still the problem is that the computational complexity, yes, it can be parallelized to some degree by how many parallel threads can your GPU support, but still it is N log N. And we go into some traditional type of simulations which we will not be discussing in this course. So, you've got the flowing water, you've got the diffusion of a gas around, you've got two rivers meeting each other, you've got thermodynamic simulations wherein heat is getting transferred from one medium to the other, such beautiful little things that you can simulate. Now the problem is, for each one of these examples, my N is not a hundred people, a thousand people, a million people. It's nearly an infinite water molecules, it's nearly an infinite gas molecules, and these are molecular interactions which derive all the flowing of the rivers, the diffusion of gas, and everything whose physics is known, and therefore people would like to simulate it up. Now, what happens when you go into these kinds of systems where there are so many entities if you really go upon anything in N, that will be extremely difficult to simulate. And therefore we go into a second kind of simulation called as a macroscopic simulation. Now, what can be smaller than N when they are N entities? I need to model them. So of course I cannot model N entities. I cannot model those many, 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 many molecules and therefore I'll have to model things such that the agent which is acting, the entity which is being simulated is not modeled at the first place. Is that possible? Yes, answer is that is possible and that is possible because I do not model the position, the orientation and everything about one molecule. I instead model things like density function. So I model what is the density at any position in the space or if it's a 2D world like this, what's the density at any x, so I'm using any algebraic expression. So my density function could be that density is k max times x square plus y square divided by x whatever x to the power 4 that's my density function so i don't even know how many particles are there i've got the density function i've not got a function which tells me where each and every water molecule is perfectly okay 
And then you have similarly other functions like the speed function. So I have a speed with respect to the position by another function. And similarly, I could have the flow function and the other function as well. So these are called as the macroscopic variables. And that's exactly what's the difference between the two. So microscopic, I model each and every entity and it acts in the world. In a macroscopic, I do not model this thing. All that I say is, how does my density change with time? So, how does this thing change with time? And of course, it changes with space. This is what I model. And I, on a computer screen, show exactly the same thing. I do not even know how many water and air molecules are there. And therefore, big simulation systems, they can happen extremely easily because all you do dealing with are a few macroscopic variables and the first order, second order derivatives. And physics tells you that how do the derivatives they react with time. I'll in this course not be talking about microscopic simulation and uh, microscopic simulation at all. So we we'll finally consider microscopic. Now there's other limitations of macroscopic. Microscopic cannot simulate too many agents. What can macroscopic not do? There has to be a limitation. Now, my own interest is simulating you people up, all the students around there, and you people do some crazy things around, like while driving, it's a macroscopic system, there's a flow on the road, there's a density function on the road, but suddenly one of you will cause an accident. Now, imagine it like all the particles and all the molecules and one molecule is behaving differently. I don't know where are the molecules in a macroscopic simulation, it's difficult to simulate. Somebody travels on the wrong side, so in all the, in the river which is flowing, you never get some of the molecules are driving at the wrong side. Look around in the road just over here. So the agents, some of them travel opposite to the direction for no good reason, it's not even allowed. Some people, on the other hand, will unnecessarily show a panic. So you enter 63 building, it's a nice flow from the girl's hostel, from the boy's hostel, can be done microscopic. But suddenly somebody says, oh my god, I forgot my eye card. And suddenly this person is behaving differently. So, microscopic this becomes a bit difficult because you want to make some molecules, some agents, some entities act differently which are not even modeled. Now, there's a branch which we don't deal with, it's called as a mesoscopic simulation. It tries to get the best of both of them, so it can model some groups, it can model some kind of agents, some kind of behaviors from the microscopic level and individual modeling is there. But rather than taking all of them, it can take in densities of them and see how do they behave and separate. So at some level, there's a microscopic modeling of different entities. At another level, you've got all the micros macroscopic behaviors that get in. So Depending on the kind of simulation, you can really control things around over here. 